Hello, this is Martin Brossman, and I wanted to take a moment to do an updated overview of LinkedIn. In my customized training for professionals, I do a deep dive and break down each component. And the last LinkedIn overview I did, I realized was four years ago, so it's time to do a quick update. I see LinkedIn as the digital first impression of you. So treat it more like a hologram of you for them to view. If it looks like a lame resume you put on, it's not going to help you to enhance your brand or get a better job. So let's go over some highlights on this. Again, in my training, I go much deeper. I recommend having a picture at the top that represents you. So if you're with a realty group, you may want to get a picture from them. It's great to show your loyalty to a business you work with. In my case, one of the things I love doing is speaking. So that's a picture of me in front of about 500 people. Photo here. It also allows you to put a recording of the pronunciation of your name, which is really nice for people on LinkedIn. Scrolling down, you want to make sure that the key things are selected that you want to be known by, and you've selected the primary business and others. I'll show you where you do that, but I just want you to scroll down a little bit and go over some highlights. It's looking at mine, and then we have featured items, so you can put stuff you want featured here, activity, and as we keep scrolling down, about. Now, this is an area where I've been adamant for years, I want this in first person, unless you in introduce yourself to strangers in third person, like, hey, it's good to meet Martin Brossman. I hope you like him. Take some time to fill this out. There's a lot of deep dive you can go into, but what do you want them to know about you as a business professional? Fill that out, give itself some space, and then if there's some specialties, add that. Then in experience, make yourself three-dimensional here. Really look and say, hey, what do I want them to know about? What is, what is the aspect of this activity that shows competency in the, them making a decision in trusting or hiring me? So think about that when you do it and fill out some content and then look to have pictures if you can. Now, I've, I'm helping out my uh, university, so I found a picture of me standing in front of the uh, knight that's kind of the aspect of the Knights of uh, St. Andrews. Photos, videos, whatever you have there that gives them an idea. Now, I'm an advocate of going all the way back with time. Some aren't. I am. Because this is a digital first impression of you, and we want to show the competency you have over time. I like each one, if you're going for a specific job or a specific future, each one of the things in the past ask the question, what skills did I build here that a customer hiring me now would see as an asset that I can talk about. So when you screen through that, you really build out a compelling past. University, fill that out too. Are there some stories? Is there something there that brings you out three-dimensional? They choose to look at it. Yes, yes. High school, I got it in there. I've had people go, did you really teach holography in high school? Yeah, I really did. I wrote a book on it. If you've got it, get it out there. Let's market it. Certificates, training you have, any volunteer work you've done, skills. Make sure the top three are up here that you want to be known by. Whatever those top three are, make sure you've got them up. You can have up to 50. You can edit this, get those top three. Make sure it's not like searching the internet or something ridiculous and you're now a real estate agent. So what do you want to be known by? Recommendations. After you full filled out your profile and updated it, some of the ways I told you, come back and look up people from your past or anyone you know that you'd gladly acknowledge online or in a at a dinner event. See if you can connect to them and write recommendations. You know, I, I learned from a job uh, a purse placement person. They said they'll look at receives and send and see if they're a giver or a taker. If all they see is 
recommendations received and they don't see any given, they label them as a taker. They lose some points in it. So here I've got, I've given 204 and I've received 156. And I think I might have asked for 10 total in all the years I've been on LinkedIn back to 2004. Publications, got any of those, get them up there. I've got a new book coming up, so I want to update that. Uh, and then courses, awards, and recognition you have. I'd get that stuff in there as well. Organizations you might be part of, interest. Remember, this is giving a snapshot of you. They're choosing to look through. Fill it out. Make it 3D. Make it stand out. Make it interesting for them to look at. I'll show my associate, Karen. She's very artistic. I think she does a very good job with hers. Uh, art is a passion of hers. She wants people to know that. So that's at the top. But she also talks about what she focuses on. And we've uh, taught the course at NC State, the Social Media Management Certificate Program, for many years. Then she has some content, colorful go back. Here's the thing I love. She worked at EDS uh, many years ago, right down here. Look at this. And she found some old slides uh, from that time period. They're defunct, but, you know, that gives some interest in it. And then here, another one I like is she did uh, landscape design. She didn't take any pictures, but the place is still there. So she got some photos to make it stand out and be interesting. And then if we go back further in time, she worked as a, a chemist and she contacted her old boss and said, got any old photos? None of our, her, but these clearly are, I love this one of the tie. You just, uh, that, that says that time period. All of these make you more three-dimensional, more interesting, more worth participating with and engaging with. Next, we want to go into our settings. So let's, let's go back to my profile and I'll go over a few key settings that are important to know. If you're looking at the profile here and we look at contact information, well, let's contact information. So here we have the LinkedIn profile. I want you to make sure that's cleaned up with just your name. I don't want you to put something cutesy in here. You can edit that and make it your name. Then it shows the key websites. Use that well. So have those three websites in there and listed. Uh, they used to let you title them as well. Uh, that's changed. And then I wouldn't put a cell phone on here unless you want the world to know it. I wouldn't put a home address unless you have a, you know, a business address. This is my business phone. This is my address. And then you can also add more than one email and have one as primary. Why? What if you work for a company and somehow that ends abruptly? Then you lose control over your LinkedIn. But if you have another email, you could reconnect to your uh, LinkedIn profile. So let's kind of open this up and see what we got back here. So here we have the number, uh, phone type work, the address, my birth, the, the birth date. Generally, people would turn this off. Mine's so well known on the internet, I left it up. But for most people, you can control the visibility of that website. I'll just go ahead. It used to let you update with um, information on it. So I'll get... Um, We'll get that, and I'll just change it back to company. They took out the little extra text you could add in it. And so it's just three of my business pages have it, and it now it lets you add more websites. You can add more websites if you want. It used to be just three, so just know that. Then we go down further, and we can control messaging option and Skype, and we'll go back. I'll click save. Make sure to click save. Some of these require save and others don't. And then the picture, there's a little pencil here so you can edit the picture. I don't want to change this picture, but you can change it and edit it. And you notice how I cropped it in a little bit. And the next thing is that customized URL that I mentioned. Go over here. This is 
what is visible online, and here's where you can customize it. So if you look in the upper right-hand corner here, you see I can customize it. I want your name. I just put it together. If, now, if you're Joe Smith, you might have to be Joe R. Smith Jr. or something like that, because if it's taken already, you can't grab it. Then public. Make this content public. If you didn't want it visible to Google, you probably shouldn't told what 800 million people or whatever on on LinkedIn. Now, if you want a badge, you can get it. I'm kind of an advocate of putting this at right here on my signature line on a website and others so they can come back and pre-screen me. And then this is showing you what's visible to the world. So the articles that occur, some activity, uh, experience. Now, you won't see the recommendation unless you sign in, but you can use those elsewhere. But you see how there's plenty of content for Google to find me and look me up. Pretty valuable. Now in settings, let's go over into settings, settings and privacy. This is where you'll go into. Now I go into this much more extensively in the training, but in settings, you can control what notifications you get, sign in and security, uh, account preferences, just go through and, and check each one of these, what's relevant for you. If you have two accounts, here's a tool for merging accounts. That's something that people are concerned. Email addresses, you want to click this. I'm not going to show you all my email addresses, but if you click that, it's worth it. Two-factor verification, yes, I do highly recommend this. Uh, this is more secure, and I put it on everything else, and I really need to have it on LinkedIn. So I'll come back and do that a little later, but I'll put in my email. That's something that, you know, the plumber's plumbing's always leaking. I should have done already. But what I love is the extra email. So if someone sent you an invite from another email, it will still come here and it won't try to generate a new pad. So that's where you can click the primary one and have multiple other email. Going back to LinkedIn, again, real high level, just want to cover some fundamental concepts here. When you click home, then you can click the area to post something. Good to do it. I think it's also more important to, if you've got strategic allies, check it regularly and stay in touch with them. Like, it's a good friend. He always has good content. Uh, I'll come back and read this, but it's important to note, but it'd be nice uh, for me to read it and add a comment to it. So, no, that's very valuable. You Showing you remember them and stay in touch with your allies is going to make them want to remember you. Here's the next gold writing articles. When you click this, it will let you create an article. And I'm going to put it under my name. I could do it under the business too. And this page lets me put a headline. For beginners, I recommend having a headline that someone might search for. Get a picture. Make sure you have rights to that picture. And then you can go down here and fill this in with content and mention people and really get some great content that's also visible to Google. And let's go over and show some examples of that. Scroll down. I click show all activity, and then I say articles right there. See articles? Articles right at the top, and it shows my different articles. So this would be like, what is the metaverse? That's something someone might look for. I got a part one and two. I've done a lot of work on the understanding crypto from a business perspective, and here's the article on Alignable and so forth. So, you know, these are valuable. These can be sales collateral you use. They'll, they'll work for you out there. And if someone looks at them, we'll just take this one here and I'll open up a window. Put that at open link in incognito. So this would be an incognito window. Then if you can look at the URL at the top, I'm going to see the question mark. If you can see that, you want to delete everything after it, especially if you want to share this. That's their tracking system. Now I have a nice, clean, public article out here. Look how professional that looks. So LinkedIn, 
It has content for people to see. And then if they go, well, who is this guy? They can click and find out who was the author of the article. And uh, and it'll often show up just like this and won't have you sign in, but it at least gives you an idea. And all of this is good Google food building out my brand online. This completes the fundamental tutorial. Obviously, I didn't cover everything. If you got value out of this, make sure to share it, click subscribe in the bell, and look forward to hearing from you. This is Martin Brossman. Have a great day.